Hello again and welcome back to another day of daily Bible study. We're continuing on with the gospel according to Matthew. We are in chapter 22. We're going to pick up in uh, verse 34. Uh, before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, Jesus is irritating everybody back and forth. Uh, Lord, help us to learn what we must learn. Uh, help us to understand that you will not be put into our boxes. and Help us to, to receive whatever challenge we need to receive uh, from Jesus and to not become too full of ourselves when we think we know what we're doing. Lord, we ask you to watch over us as we consider your word. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, again, in context here, we had, um, you know, Jesus was, uh, you know, he's, he has stood against the Pharisees and the Herodians, and then he stood against the, the Sadducees. And now we read, but when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Um, and so Jesus is going to respond in the next passage with him asking them a question. Uh, but here they have, they're, they're huddled together. They're trying to figure something out. One of them is, says, I think I've got him, I think I've got him tricked. And I think part of the idea here is that, you know, one of the things that, that, that a, a lawyer, meaning in this case, not necessarily someone who represents you in court in general, but someone who is an expert in the Old Testament law, is realizing that basically any answer Jesus can give, there is a reason why uh, he could be seen as being wrong. You know, if you pick any one of the Ten Commandments, you might be like, well, what about all those others? And don't you care about this? Um, and it's significant that, that both of these uh, passages, are both of these arguments that Jesus has are um, quotations from the Old Testament, uh, but they are not from the same place in the Old Testament. I'm going to double check one of those Crawford references here. Uh, I believe this first one is from what is called the Shema, which is... Um, yeah, so here we go. This is one of the most important prayers in the Old Testament. This is from Deuteronomy 6, starting in verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And then he goes on about following the law. So Jesus says that's the number one, which, you know, was certainly, you know, uh, as good of a response as any individual one. But he then goes on to say, uh, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And that's also a quotation from the Old Testament. And one of the things he's doing here is he's he's kind of there's several things going on at once. He is one saying, um, you boiling everything down to absolutely one statement is not helpful, nor is it accurate, nor is it actually the way that God has ever interacted with the people. There's never been just one thing. Do this one thing. Even the one thing is actually two things. And, and Jesus does this by, you know, there's been a long tradition that says that the Ten Commandments are divided up into what they call the, you know, two tables. So we have these two tablets of stone that God wrote the Ten Commandments on. And so the way we've talked about those, at least metaphorically, is to say one of the tablets, the first table of the law, is, um, is the, the laws that deal with our interaction with God. And then the second one is how we interact with other people. And so there's a question as to whether the Fourth Commandment about uh, the... Um, Sabbath is, should be on the first or second table because the rationale given for the fourth commandment in Exodus is about God created in six days and then rested, which makes it seem like it should be in the first table, our relationship with God. Uh, and then, but also, but the rationale in Deuteronomy is that it has to do with the fact that you know what it's like to be a slave in Egypt, so you're going to get make sure everybody has a day of rest, which certainly sounds like how we interact with each other. But regardless, you have this sense in which in this order, first we figure out our relationship with God, and then from that we figure out our relationship with other people to the point where we have this constant duality of those things where if we only have our, our relationship with God right, but we're not right with one another, then we have not fully followed the Ten Commandments. The same way, we can follow all the Ten Commandments, not, or we can follow the don't murder and don't commit adultery and don't lie and don't steal, but if our relationship with God is not right, then we have not followed the Ten Commandments. And so here we have Jesus doing exactly that kind of thing, where he says, you know, this twofold motion of being connected with God and connected with one another, that is what this means. All of the law and the prophet is based on that the basic twofold relationship. Um, and, and it's really important that we grasp that, because... Um, you know, what Jesus is saying is, is when you boil it down, yeah, you can boil it down to less than 10, you know, but if you somehow obscure that twofoldness, then you're going to miss a big point of what's up. Um, 
So it really is is significant on, on a couple of different directions. But once again, we find Jesus never quite giving an answer directly the way people expect. On each of these things, with the 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 paying the poll tax and the question of the resurrection and the greatest commandment, we have in each of those three situations, Jesus gives an answer that says, I'm not going to play your games. I'm not going to take your question just as you read it. I'm going to redefine it. I'm going to give you the real answer. I'm not going to get trapped in the question that you got. It's like being asked the question, when did you stop beating your wife? Like to answer that question on its own terms is to admit that you have been beating your wife. And there's no way to answer it that, you know, without rejecting the question. Jesus is doing that with all of these things. Jesus is rejecting the questions and saying, you cannot answer faithfully the question, what is the one commandment that matters more than all others? At best, you could say, here are two commandments that must be held together in the same way, uh, you know, that, that he, he rejects those other questions as well. And so, and Jesus is going to turn the tables on them here in our next passage, but we're going to look at that tomorrow. So uh, that's all for today. Come back tomorrow. We'll have more of the gospel according to Matthew. Have a good day.